Hello viewers, welcome to Elimu TV, the station you watch and learn. So today I will be taking you through English Form 1, Lesson 28. I'm your tutor, Madam LC, and our topic will be listen, listening and speaking. And our subtopic will be stylistic devices in poetry, which is the continuation of our previous lesson, which was Lesson 27. So by the end of the lesson, the, you should be able to describe different styles used in poetry or the stylistic devices in poetry. So first you will have to define these stylistic devices. What are stylistic devices? So these are styles that are important in, important in poetry since they will make the reciter or the poem feel involved, hence becoming a form of entertainment. So these stylistic devices help one to feel entertained. Then the various styles usually give an auxiliary or a helping meaning, ideas or feeling to the literalism. Stylistic devices, so we have these different stylistic devices and their examples. First we'll uh, go through personification. This refers to giving inanimate objects the characteristics of human beings. So you give something that is not a human or it is not an animal. So you give it the characteristics of animals and humans. For, for example, the car, in a sentence, the car came and stood right at our gate. So when you, you look at the sentence, the car cannot stand. What stands is a human being, so the car cannot stand. It is given a characteristic of a human being, so that is personification. We have the second sentence, the gas was whispering softly as the food simmered. So the one whispering is a, a, is a characteristic of an animal or a human being. So the word, the word whispering is a characteristic of a human being or animal and it is given to a gas. So it is being personified. Then we have onomatopoeia. This includes words that sound like they, like, like their meaning are imitations of sound. For example, we have the bee buzzing, we have don't slam the door. Then we have alliteration, it is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of one. So it is repeating the, the consonant sounds, sounds not letters, at the beginning of one. So it should be at the beginning of one. So it is important that it aids in shaping the mood in the poem, it creates rhythm in the poem, it creates emphasis, adds beauty in the writing style. Then we have assonance. This is repetition of vowel sounds in the middle of a word. So in alliteration, we have said it is repetition of Consonant sounds at the beginning of a word, and then assonance, we are saying it is the repetition of vowel sounds at the middle of a word. For example, words, words, so the, the sound O and the sound O in those two words are repeated. And then we have this in the second sentence, under their feet, under their feet. So when you see under, there, so the, the sound a, a in the second letter and in the third letter they are repeated. So that is assonant. Then we have consonants. It is the repetition of consonant sounds at the end of letter of words. So in alliteration we say it's at we said it's at the beginning and here in consonants it's at the end of the one. So for example, long and boring. So mm -hmm. At the end of those words are consonants. We have odds and ends. So, s sound s at the end of the words are consonants. So, for reference, you can refer to excelling in English Book 1, that is KLB. And for more information, you can contact us on our SMS number 0723 14 
on our Facebook page Elimu TV, YouTube page Elimu TV, and Twitter at Elimu TV underscore KE.